Um, so let me, I guess, write in a different color, um, just this, ya is equal to na over nt, and na is this, and nt is uh, this expression. So now I'm gonna change the page. And I have that the mole fraction is equal to Na naught times one minus the conversion of A all over Nt naught plus three times Na naught times conversion of A. Great, so I could go ahead and try to substitute this back in, but now I, I have, um, well, I have uh, this NT naught and uh, some terms that are maybe not the, um, the simplest for me to use. Um, in instead, I can define uh, one more thing here, which is the initial mole fraction. Um, and the initial mole fraction was just the number of moles of A that I started with over the total number of moles I started with. And this is nice because I was given this information. And this is just um, going to simplify um, this e expression here for mole fraction. So it's uh, mole fraction of A initially times one minus conversion of A over one plus three times the mole fraction of A initially times conversion of A. Okay. So if I keep going and now put this back into, so um, substitute back into CA expression, trying to do this one step at a time here. I get CA is equal to, I had before this. And so that's gonna start to look like this. The mole fraction of A initially is a constant, so and so is the pressure, and so is the temperature. So you can have that all out as a constant term, and then I just have everything in terms of conversion, one minus the conversion of A over one plus three times the mole fraction of A initially times the conversion of A. Okay, now I can try to Substitute in all of this for CA, uh, though I saw it, you know, on the numerator and denominator of the right hand side. Um, I also have a volume term uh, from before that um, I want to just be able to substitute out as well. So let me make a note here. Let's also substitute for volume an unknown function of conversion of A. So we're gonna do that on the next page. Uh, we know that our volume, the total volume over the initial volume is equal to the total number of moles over the initial uh, number of moles. That so these are directly proportional to one another. So if we if we do if we use this relationship, we get uh, we can multiply the initial volume on the right hand side, um, and then we get. The total number of moles from earlier was the initial number of moles, is three Na naught times conversion of A over Nt naught. And uh, if we wanted to simplify this, we could say that this is just um, the uh, initial volume times one plus three times the mole fraction of A times the conversion of A. Okay, 
but we don't know what the initial volume was. Uh, so we have to do one more substitution here. And I, I want to pause for a moment just to point out, this is what the Roberts text is doing. Uh, this is a long and tedious way to solve this problem. And I want to show you how it can be done. And so you can then see uh, a shorter cut that, um, you know, would save you a lot of, of trouble, but you should understand what exactly it's, it's saving you from doing. Uh, okay, so if we just want to know what the initial volume was, then we can um, start with, then it's just uh, using ideal gas law, um, the total number of moles we started with um, times RT over P. Okay, so, so now we're going back to the design equation. And we're substituting. Okay, we have uh, we have n a naught, and then we have. I'll just I'll write what it was before, so that it doesn't so I'm not skipping steps. We had this. <clears throat> and now we want to substitute in for volume. So we're going to I'll use a red color for this. So V equals NTO times RT over P times one plus three mole fraction of A initially times conversion. You can see that this is just what's coming from this times that. This is how we're subbing in for volume here. And uh, let's just do that substitution for now. That gives us, with some rearranging, P times NA naught over RT times NTO times one plus three Y naught times conversion of A times the uh, derivative of conversion of A with respect to time equals KCA over one plus K times C A. And now if we make the substitutions for C A, substitute um, C A with conversion A terms, rather than spend all my time writing for what that would look like, uh, alone, I'm going to also rearrange some terms, and the book skips more steps. Um, I've actually filled in a quite a few of the steps that the book is doing. Um, so you you get one term that looks like this, uh, another term that's the product of all of these constants over R T times uh, the D conversion of A over one plus three Y A naught times conversion of A, and you get K D T. So let's maybe quickly highlight where some of these came from. Um, so clearly on the right hand side, I've just separated my variables. So what you're seeing here on the left-hand side reflects um, the substitution 
uh, of these CA terms and then their rearrangement um, over to, to this side. So you effectively have uh, 1 plus Ka times Ca on the numerator, and so you have a one term and you have a um, Ka uh, term as well. And then if you integrate this, and solve then you get minus ln and you can actually see that the way this is broken up is pretty suitable to integration uh, this term can be integrated on its own and so can this and all of the and because this is all constant um, these are actually not not uh, this isn't a difficult integration uh, as as long and complex as the expression is. So you have a minus natural log of one minus conversion of A plus um, Ka times P over, you get a coefficient three that comes out from here after taking the integral times the natural log of one plus three y a naught times conversion of a, and all of that equals k t. So that is your expression for how conversion changes as a function of time.